I think we're both pretty obsessed with Christmas, not just the decorating, but the whole thing. The music, the drink, the food, the people. When we got here, we were really excited about kind of amping up the kind of country cottage decoration. We've gathered stuff over the last few years, mostly from local junk shops, antique stores, and then we've bought lots at auction as well. But it's happened really naturally over time. We have been here for about three years. Uh, initially, we found this place to kind of spend the weekends and, and get out of London. And then for about the last year and a half, we've kind of been here full time. We love having an open fire in the cottage. This chimney doesn't draw very well, so sometimes at night we're sitting around not realizing we're being smoked like trout. I think it's just fun to get the house kind of dressed up for Christmas. This amazing wreath was made by our neighbor, Silke Ritzen Thomas, who has a business called the Tuck Tuck Flower Studio, and she made it with things I think just gathered from her garden, which is pretty cool. These two incredible sort of wreaths attached on either end. I'm not gonna to touch it too much, I don't want it to fall off. Pretty much love anything that looks like an animal uh, or a vegetable. I mean, we've got some really fun extra bits. I mean, these um, ceramic heads are made by our friend Gavin Houghton. We went to Venice a few years ago at Christmas time. We found this incredible Christmas market that we sort of stumbled upon in the very sort of spooky winter mist thing you get in Venice. And we found this incredible hall of vintage Murano baubles, I guess from the 50s. So we bought as many as we could carry home. Every time we've been back since, we've always tried to find the same market and never been able to. So I almost wonder if it was a sort of Christmas mirage. We've got plenty of bits and pieces from um, Cutterbrooks, which is just up the road from us. We've also got lots of vintage baubles. We broke about four or five when we were putting the tree up uh, yesterday. Um, but we're not too precious. I mean, I think, I think you can't be too precious about your, uh, your baubles. Duncan's really good at tying them and I'm a bit sloppy, so he... I'm a dexterous bow tire. <laughs> I kind of prefer them to tinsel. You're more of a tinsel man. Last year I sneaked some on when he was having a bath. All of our Staffordshire figurines get a little tinsel tie at Christmas. I think because we both also work as designers, in our work life it's also a very fun place to experiment. So we often try things out that we might want to do for a project or you know, have pieces of prototype furniture that we would make um, to see if they worked and then kind of incorporate them into the house. So this is a little slipper chair that Luke made for a project that we ended up adopting. Same as this kind of Ottoman thing. The cabinet's one of the first things we bought for the house, actually. I think we got it even before we had beds or a kitchen table. It's from one of our favourite dealers in the UK, uh, Brown Rig in Tetbury. We both love collecting ceramics and glass. These are a really great set of painted plates that we found in the junk shop around the corner. Kind of fun, swaggy. These vases I bought for Duncan's Christmas present last year, along with these salt cellars, and they were made by Tess Morley, who makes things covered in shells and does kind of grotto sort of accessories and furniture. I'm a big Fornicetti fan, both big Fornicetti fans, and this was made by Genori, uh, the ceramic company in Florence for Fornicetti, with a really beautiful view of Venice. Anything shaped like a fruit or a vegetable also gets a look in. Love these, little watermelon, don't know what they're for. During the pandemic, I got quite addicted to a website called The Sale Room, and I basically screamed when I saw these chairs. They were in the writer and um, historian Roy Strong's sale. I just love them because I love Gothic design, especially kind of Strawberry Hill Gothic, white painted furniture, um, and I love that they came with these perfect little pink cushions. I think for us, Christmas food is kind of the most important part of the whole thing. Not just the eating, but the thinking about what we're going to cook, the preparation, the finding the food, planning the menus, all that kind of stuff. We love having people over at Christmas time for, for drinks. We, um, we do a Christmas party every year. For this, we commissioned our friend Jesse D'Ambrosi, who has a wonderful deli in stone on the wall called D'Ambrosi. We thought it'd be fun to commission a kind of Abigail's party feast. So we were thinking slightly of that 70s, 80s, you know, cheese and pineapple on a stick. I've got a book somewhere of kind of like 70s or maybe it's 80s food photography and I love that kind of like bright flash kind of rings of prawns stuff, um, cheese stuffed in um, pineapples and things like that. 
we love being at home. We love having people over. We love all about that. And it's a sort of season of overindulgence and, you know, more is more. And that's kind of our general, I guess, outlook on life probably. But actually at the end of the day, all that Christmas is really about is, is being with the people you love and, and, you know, eating good food and spending time together. Thank you.